Welcome to the extremely cold, totally awesome fishing show. Tonight they've given a forecast of minus five degrees. Look, and on the newspaper when we stopped to get some uh, diesel on the way down, it said, Arctic weather creates hazardous for health. <laughs> Come on, it's England for God's sake. Such an all, English title. All, all you Canadian people who've got like 20 and 30 below must fall around <laughs> laughing at us. But listen, the way it is in England, you know, five degree, degree, degrees below and they think we're gonna uh, get <coughs> wasted on the beach. But we're here and we're just going to have a real social session, aren't we, really? Yeah, I mean, we've got the, I've got my, I've brought my little firebox along, which if you watch, if you guys who watch Totally Awesome Outdoors or other YouTube channel, I, it's a little wood burning stove, basically. It's got its own ashtray so that you don't leave any mess on the beach, take everything home with you. It doesn't leave a big burn mark or anything like that. And it actually piles up the heat. So we've yeah. got the, the, the wood burning stove going and uh, we've got a porcupine of rods out here, <laughs> classic Graham Pullen. How many have boy. we got? Six, two, four, six rods out. Most beach fishermen yeah. would go with two. Some are spinners. It's though, a social they? session. Yeah, yeah. Some are spinners are only throwing 20, 30 yards. Yeah, but at the moment they're tapping away. We've got the <laughs> yeah. fire going. Dad's bought his tilly lamp, haven't you? you yes, yeah, an, an anchor lamp. It's called an anchor lamp. I mean, we've used it once before about four or five years ago when we first started. Now, when I was a kid, my family had some property down there, and I used to fish down as a kid when fishing really was good. This beach along Hailing Island would be a string of what they call tilly lamps, honestly. 30 or 40 especially I bet weekends. that was really something to see actually. It was it's, quite something, yeah. everybody was fishing, everybody's enjoying it. More fish unfortunately, now less fish, but listen, we've got to go with what we've got to go, haven't we? Yeah, I mean we've kind of gone back to our roots here with this video because <clears throat> I we, we were trying to think of the last time we brought this anchor or tilly lamp out and um, we reckon it was our beach fishing for beginners. I think mm. it was part one, which is our biggest hitting beach fishing video out there. If you haven't seen it, check it out. I'll pop a link up somewhere yeah. in front of you for you to watch our beach fishing playlist. There's loads of beach fishing videos out there. But we're, 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 we're just general fishing. We're not specifically targeting any species. We're going to cook up some sausages. Yeah, yeah. We, it's, it's a real social session. Have a bit of fun. I thought the wife had had sandwiches. I looked for the sandwiches. Yeah. I said, let's eat the sandwiches first. I went, just, oh no, that really is all we got devastated. To, we really, really are surviving. If we catch a fish big enough, we will cook it because we've got a pan on that here as well. Yeah. And the car, obviously, it's dead easy to park. What's the car, 20 yards 20 away? yards, it's lovely. That's why we're yeah. bringing, you wouldn't bring all this tiddy lamp stuff if you were fishing, you know, Walking a half a mile to a mile yeah. away. But because it's so accessible here where we are, we're bringing those home comforts with us. And obviously it's going down to minus five, so we want to keep warm. And this shelter. Now yeah. I've been out there baiting up. Mike's been doing the casting, I've been doing the lashing and baiting. Obviously, fingers are frozen because this I got squid out this sandal and they were frozen. <coughs> and the ice in these made my fingers really cold. But as soon as you come in, because the wind is moving, as soon as you come out the wind chill in here, wow, yeah, it's, it's tropical. Lovely. Get the sun oil it's out. Lovely. But we'll talk about our setup in a minute. Yeah. Um, I think we need to go and check some of these rods. You reckon? What we're doing, guys, in case you, the big fish guys know all this, but you know, we're not big fish guys. I actually did have my biggest cod from this exact mark. It's 11 pounds four, many, many many years ago <laughs> and I think it was on Squid and Limpet Combo. It's in one of my books anyway, I think Go Fish of a Cod. That's my claim to fame. Other than that, it's been like nine pounders. I've never really had another double figure cod off the shore. But what they do some guys, they have, they'll have a small baited hook and a big free hook behind it. And they will hook a white in and just tether it and leave it out there. And they catch a really big cod like that. Over here in the UK, you know, I don't know whether you guys around the world do that as well, that they'll tether a live bait out there and let it get eaten. But they do do it for cod, so we sort of could have wound these these small yeah. fish in. We don't know what they are yet. We haven't wound anything in. We've been doing the fire, but we've left it in case something grabs hold. I think it's time to check them out. Don't let's you? check them. Yeah, let's go and check them. Now a lot of people out there ask us what are the bites like when I go beaches. I'm not sure. Is it weed? But listen, sometimes it is weed. It's just bumping in the tide. But generally, a small fish bite, pouting, whiting. Could be flounders, could be plaice, could be dabs, could be anything we get around the UK. Will be a really small bar. I just tucked the line. Now one is on braid and one is on nylon. So if I put the head torch on the on the on, on the tip up there, so I'll take it off my head, right on the tip. The braid rod barely has to have a nibble. Now I'm gonna move this about half an inch. Look. A, a bite will be short ones like this, tapping away. And you can see up here is a softer blank, it's a different one, it's a bass blank. It's got more of a bend in it, and that one there is nylon, so I've got to move it a lot further. Look, I don't get the same bites, do I? I'm moving that twice as far, down here if you look at my finger, I'm moving that twice as far with my finger, and I'm getting half the register on the rod top. Whereas if we go back to here, I just barely move, look, I barely move my finger, and look up at the rod top, you can see the bite there. And we've got a pair of rods over that side, which really have got fish on, I think we should wheel them in. There we go, there we go, look at the rod top. 
This is a little spinning rod. We've got two spinning rods. We're leaning against the groin. And I'm going to wheel this one in. But I've just jammed it like that and rested it against the groin. Obviously, we're just sitting a matter of feet away. I do the drag up. I check it. Now, what I do is I'm going to wind right down to the water's edge before I start wheeling it in, if it's on. If we basically cast out and walk the rods back, what we've got is a flood tide. There's no point setting your gear up all the way down to the water's edge, and you're going to have to keep moving it back all the time. But I'm not winding in at the moment, I'm just gaining line, get down to the water's edge, I'm going to wind down. Oh, I thought there's something on there. This was a, a three hook, I call it my three hook short rig. You can have two hooks on it if you want, but very, very short, smooth. We've done a film on it, just tying it, and I've been pretty successful on these spinning rods, just throwing it out 30, 40, 50 yards. 100% there's going to be something on it. I'm saying that, I'm going to look really, really stupid if there's not. So here you go, people. I do not speak with forked tongue. Mr. Whiting rattling away on there. And of course, as we said, a big cod. If you had, imagine, this one tethered out there and a big hook up here spliced into the line. Along comes a cod, he eats this and snags up the big hook as well. That's when you can get a big fish. We're not gonna keep anything, we've got food, so we're gonna unhook these guys and just pop them back. That was on a spinning rod and a really short trace. We'll show you the bait in a minute. Tiny little baits like that. Then the larger size, these are eating fish. We're going to put this one back, they're undersized. It's fun to catch them, and they will take fish strip baits and squid because they've got lots of little pin teeth in there. Tiny little pin teeth, so they are a, a proper little predator. And I'll tell you what, they taste pretty good in the frying pan when they're in the bigger sizes as well. Let's get this one back, and I think, Mike, you can wheel the next one in. Another whiting. I mean, that, they're actually not too bad size. No, but there was a bite on that rod, way, way bigger than a whiting. Really? Oh, yeah, honestly. Could yeah, have been right. a cod hidden it. Maybe well, or chasing it. Or maybe one of them small smooth hounds. Yeah. But another nice fish, good eating fish. But we're going to put it back. We put a lot of our fish back on Taylor Orson because we like to practice catch and release. So put this one back, and then uh, hopefully get some more of those other rods are hammering away. Well, I'm just about to wind a fish in. Uh, no, I am. It's a race. Oh, I can't move it. <laughs> it's a grip lead guy. Well, no, listen, oh, I think cool. it could be a fish as well. Are you clear? Yeah, I think I'm moving. <laughs> Double waiting. Oh, yes. Two for the totally awesome cameras. And Dad's got something on there. It's grip. Has he got one? You got one? Oh, it's a nice one. He's got a nice white. Another two for. Another two for. Two for one. Two for one. Yes. Now I told you guys. I hope you've watched the video about these short snoods. Oh, they're and awesome. Do you know what? They man, are they're, they're, deadly. No question, they're working. I'm not saying they're a big fish thing. Yeah. But if you guys just want to go out and catch fish, small. Uh, the smaller the bait, about the length of your little finger, elasticate a couple of baits together, worm and. Squid combo, worm, and maybe sandhill combo. Not too big, let them get some of that they can eat. That's not bad, guys, is it? Awesome. So this is a bait we're using, we're getting these fish on. Just regular ragworm here, which we've got in a newspaper. Now, with minus five degrees in that, just be careful, because I have fished in minus 11 and had them freeze solid to the beach that was down at Eastbourne. So you will kill them, so just keep them, say, under your bivy, or put something over the top of them just to keep the ice off them. These have been frozen anyway. I've got sand all there, and I've got squid there. And what I'm doing is using tiny baits. Look, a third of the size of the sand eel. Cut the squid in half, and then cut it in half again. Now, a lot of people strip all the guts out of it. That, by the way, that looks like plastic, for those who don't know, is the backbone of the squid. I'm gonna cut the head off, and I'll cut those in half. And this is called unwashed squid. That's what they call it. Whether it's any good unwashed, they say, or there might be more scent in it, I don't know. Now, one thing I will say, I cannot get enough of it. Nicker elastic. That's it, this bait elastic stuff. 
this is a really thin one. I've got to be honest, I don't like this thin stuff. A, I can't see it, and you know, I just don't like it so much, but I'm using it because I can't find my other one. So I'm going to get something like the squid. I'm just going to nick it on the fat end once, like that. And then, let me get a worm. I should have said, here's one I prepared earlier. So there is a worm. I'm just going to nick that, leaving about a half inch of head sticking out. Now I'm going to hold them both like this. Yeah, I'm just doing this slowly, so hopefully you can see it. So the two are together, but they're not like... I haven't killed the worm off by whipping it in, uh, putting it on the shank. I'm going to whip it onto the hook, like this, and bind it on. And I'll tell you what, you can catch two or three or four <coughs> small fish, whiting, dabs, flounders, whatever, by doing it this way. And then, see the loose end of the worm, you can either snap it off, use it for another bait, or double it back. That's what I've been doing, because there is an outside chance of a coddling. I just gently, I don't want to cut it in, in half by the thread, bind it all the way up the top. I'm not clipping these baits down, this is the rig I'm just using with a little short snood to it. A half inch knot just to finish, snap it off. The hook's clear, it's very, very sharp. And look how close I am to my main line here. Very, very close. Five inches, something like that. I do that on my three hooks and fire it out of there and wait for the fish. Well, guys. We've been pounding out the whiting, but one of my headlamps has gone down. I've got mics on at the moment. You know these button pushers? They're really good. But you know what we used to use years ago? A pressure lamp. And I bought one with me just to try it out old school. It's actually an anchor lamp. It's a Chinese make, and I've had it 27 years. I bought it from Tony's Tackle. Tony will probably fall down crying in tears to think I'm beginning to buy another one. But that's lasted me 27 years. Well, what do you think this is? Now, what in God's name is that? It's incredibly heavy. I had it made up. It's made out of reinforcing reed bar. You can make them out of wood. Looks like a shepherd's crook. Is that a shepherd's crook? Nah! It's this. It's for hanging a lamp on this hook, driving in the sand or shingle, just like this. Get it in there, it's nice and high. And then, forget these headlamps. Wait till you see my pressure lamp. I've got it going. All that age, it took me a while to get it going. It is going. This is what you call a real old school fishing lamp. And along here on Halin Beach, 50 years ago when I was fishing down here as a kiddie, well, a bit longer than that actually, these were lined with not these ones, a smaller version of it, a pressure lamp called a Tilly lamp. Some of you old guys out there probably remember them. Some of you might even have a Tilly lamp. Some of you might even have an anchor lamp like this. Some of these are 400 candle power. I can't look at it, but it goes up here like this. Man alive, the world is lit up. Just take a look around, rod tops, reels, everything's lit up here. I can walk around, I can bait up to do everything. It's brilliant, I mean, they are good. I mean, there's a couple of adapt adaptations you can do. If you're really watching rods, you don't want to be looking at the full white power because you lose your night vision. Just to give you an idea, that's what, 10 yards away, if you just look over there, you're going to see the rod tops lit up on the spinning rods we've got leaning on the groin. That's not a torch, we even switch the camera light off. There's no camera light, there's no head torch, it's purely the light from that thing there. Okay, now you're going to ask yourself, where can I get one from? Well, I assume you can still get them off the internet, I don't know. Some of the tackle shops probably still sell them. But, how do they work? You're going to ask yourself that, obviously. Right, down here, I'm going to put the torch on, if you can see that. In here is, let's call it your reservoir of paraffin. You do not put anything but paraffin in there. There are different versions that used to be made that ran on petrol. I wouldn't use them myself. I'm happy with the paraffin one. To get the paraffin vaporised, they have to go up into a tube up inside there. And that's what goes through that mantle, which is like a silk. Very, very delicate. On the outside, it's an extremely hot, it's heat resistant glass there. You have round here an adjusting knob that you can turn the power up and down. I'm not going to mess with it, it's an old lamp, but we used to be able to tune it down and save. I'll try it, I'll just try it. If it goes out, it's your fault, it's all you YouTubers' fault. There you go. I can turn it right down low, but I don't want it going out, you see? Make it last longer. I'll just keep it about there. It does have what they call a jet tube in the back there, which you can burn more fuel with and light it faster. But generally, there's a little reservoir, I don't know if you can see inside there, which you fill with methylated spirits. 
you light the methylated spirits, put the glass shield back around the top of it, very, very carefully put the mantle on. When you've lit that, it vaporizes the fuel, the paraffin inside the tube, and after it gets, it basically turns, I don't know, it turns to a vapor or a gas. Do you know, I don't know the difference between a vapor and a gas, are they both the same? Oh, trust me, trust me, somebody will be out there to tell us we know it. So I'm gonna turn that back up a bit because I want to see the bites as well. A pressure, you got a pressure gauge, I guess it goes up on bars, one and two is what I generally run it on. Um, if you want to shut it off, you can either do it with a red knob here and close the needle, or I just unscrew this valve, it releases all the air pressure trapped in here, just pushing the paraffin up the stem, and that basically is a way of putting it out. Do not put those in the car, as I have done a couple of times, hot. Gone back up, been driving happily home, and you think, that smells like burning cardboard. The lamps are light in the car, man alive. Don't do that one, I've been there, done it. I've been fishing a long time. I've possibly made most of the mistakes it's possible to make. There is a couple of other tips here. I think it's worth telling you, look guys, we're not selling you lamps, we're just telling you what we're using. I do this with them. I'm still getting bites. This yeah. thing lets me see all the bites and the rods are going crazy, so I want to get this over and done with for you. This is another tip for those guys out there, because obviously you don't always want to put the lamp behind you. You can have it in front of you. Get yourself some cooking foil and put a back screen on it like this, if you can see there. So I'm behind it. That means my pupil in my eye is going to open up more and I'll be able to see more. Without that, my pupil will close down because it's, it's responding to the light that's coming out here. This way, it's much easier to watch. And if you look over there, you can see it's throwing a shadow line to the left I'll click this on, just over here. Now, if I switch that light out, like that, you can see it's a shadow line. And out here, the light's all being reflected this way. And if I pick this up carefully, I can see, if you go right behind me with the camera, my eye feel you'll be able to see all these rods lit up. I mean, it's not the biggest piece of paper I've got to do it. So what I would do, generally, if I was cod fishing, you could go down dungeon nest fishing like this years and years ago, I would have that there. And I can move my sort of shepherd's crook around. When I go back in my boudoir, I'm sitting in here and I'm looking out and I don't have the light in my face. In fact, well, to be honest, I probably put it to the side and it throws the light over here. But it's even more of a bonus. It can also cook things. So what we used to do years ago, we would have, we'd bring a meat pie or a pasty, either wrap it in tin foil or like this one, which my wife has kindly given us. It's not very wintry, a blackcurrant and apple little pie, but it's in tin foil here. Now, I can't begin to tell you how hot the top of this lamp is. I'll leave it to your imagination by looking at the white of the mantle there. This goes on the top. Round here is most of the heat coming out, but you can put that there and heat up your pie, anything like that. I can smell it getting hot already. And this could be heated up. Just, it's, look, it's cost you nothing. The heat's there, the light's there. Fish are out there too. Well, there's rods in a minute, Mike. Yeah, we'll get those in. And then when this is starting to warm up a bit, you can have a hot pie. And then what's better than that? Well, custard. Yeah, that's true. Apple pie and custard. It could be done, Mike. <laughs> no, the apple, the apple pie's here. Yeah, the fire. The firebox is there. Yeah. It could be custard as well. <laughs> Let's get some fish. Well, this is brilliant for heating your hands up as well. Absolutely brilliant. And the pie is pretty well done. Just be careful that you don't bite into <laughs> a hot pie. Don't throw your... Look, it's steamy. I'm going to take a bite out of it. Ah! The pie's hot. About, give it about 10 minutes, depends on the size of it. Have yourself some fun with one of these lanterns. Uh, Mike! <laughs> Is there a bite? It's your rod, I'm afraid, mate. Right. I'm busy. <laughs> Well, there we go. Dad's had his pie, he's happy. I've had two more waiting, so I'm happy. And that is probably our 12, 10, 10 to 11 About fish. 11, 12 fish, yeah. Uh, 11 or 12 uh, whiting. We've not had any other species at the moment, but <clears throat> you can't deny that it's not good fishing. And it's getting freezing cold. In fact, it is freezing cold. But I can feel from the heat of that lamp there. That is lovely and warm. We've got our home comforts with us. And we probably might even cook one of these up later if we get one big enough. 
nicely hooked. You see the hook's just in the edge of the lips there, and you can still see the bait, so we might be able to recycle a bit more of that. Out comes one hook. But that bait lasts because it's whipped on, you see? It whipped, yeah. Really brilliant, really enjoying this session, Dad. I'm not enjoying the temperature. Minus, no. minus five and dropping. Look at that. Double whiting. Can't get better than that. We well, can. Double Eat cod. It. Yeah, <laughs> eating them as well. Let's put these back. I've never seen that. Film it, film it. I've never seen that before. Hold what on, is, hold on. What has happened? This is what happened. What is that? Because we've been filming so long, it's buried the line, the line sunk, and it's buried in the shingle. Look down here. I have never seen that before. Look, that's what happens in fast tide areas. It's, look, it's, it's buried. It's washed all the shingle over the line. Hopefully, I got it back. There you go. Well, it's funny if there's a fish on there because that's what happens. Cod fish. So the, the the lead's still out there, Miles, and the, oh, the yeah. line got buried. Yeah, 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 yeah. There could even be a fish on it, you see. But it's basically because we, we were filming so long, talking about that tilly lamp, the tide has washed up over the edge of a bank here, and the shingles covered over the line because the tide's coming in, it's flooding in all the time. Oh no, that was the table. He's got to get the table. Yes. Yay! Oh, that is awesome. Good fish too. A full house of whitey. That, that, well, he fell off there. He's done up yourself as well. They won't believe me. They won't believe me. Let's get him up. There we go. I'll just show him to you on the gravel there, guys. A full house of whitey. And I've told you, look, look at the length of the rig. It's short. It's, it's not tangled. The knots are holding. Everything's brilliant. I've done very, very well on these. And it's just a, a good general fish catching rig. Brilliant. So as well as our anchor lamp, I've also got concoction of some hot dogs. Obviously you can eat these straight out of the tin, these ones, but we're gonna heat them up in a saucepan rather than having a frying pan and a saucepan. Just use a saucepan, got hot dogs and some baked beans. I'm going to put that on the firebox, the, uh, the wood stove, wood burning stove, get that on there. And then hopefully that will get done quite quickly because it's relatively hot. And then we're going to get some soup going and we've also got some tea as well. You notice now they seem to be hooking themselves, but they're not rattling. I don't want to tell you this is going to keep you awake or not. I just wound this whiting in and attached to it and eating it with this disgusting parasite. It's called a lamprey. Look. He's actually, that's where he was, he's made that hole there. So can you see the circle there? So this fish is still alive. He's eaten and made, bored a hole in there. I'm going to pick him up and I will drop him if he tries to bite me. Not the fish, not the whitey. Now look at the little holes along the side here. And his mouth is just, is just like an enormous sucker. And inside that sucker, in there, is full of teeth. And it's a parasite that lives off the blood and the flesh of other creatures. It's very vampire-like. They make a good bait, but I'm, gonna, I'm just trying to show you if you'll hold still. You can see his eye there, maybe you can see his eye. Hey, I've trapped him. Or perhaps he's trapped me. And, and you can see that huge sucker mouth and a massive eye. I've never seen a lamprey like that. I don't know what type of species that one is. Well, it's a disgusting species one. So that was living on the, on, on the whiting, you can see. Look, he's eaten a hole into him, so how long he's been on there, I don't know. Let's give Mr. Whiting his life back and the lamprey a quick flick towards the sea. That is disgusting. 
Look at the... I don't know if you can see those suckers. I don't want him biting me. Let me see if he can... I don't know, Mike will be able to get that there. If you say he will sucker on me. Keep him, keep him like that, he's going to sucker on me. Yeah, I can see his teeth, look at that. That's, that. Why, that's why they probably say... Oh, they're serious what, teeth. What a sucker you are. Serious. Don't you sucker me, you son of a... He'll be on the fire. Yeah, they're big teeth, aren't they? Massive teeth, yeah. He's disgusting, they get rid of him. <laughs> and we're three Mr Whitey together with his hole in the head. Well, I'm coming off the cooking duties now. We've had sausages, we've had beans, we've had, what else, soup, soup. tea. We've cooked blimmin' cakes or <laughs> whatever on the tinny lamp. It's been really good. Uh, I've let the fire die out now. We've tidied it all up. We've actually packed the shelter away. So it's a final wind in. I'm gonna wind in all six rods and we're gonna see what we, had, what we have left. We've had them out for about 40 minutes or so now. So we're gonna wind them all in and see what we've got. There's gonna be one on there. There's gotta be something. We'll start the spinning rods. Start with the baby spinning rods. We're about 25 yards out. <clears throat> it's a blank for that one, but we've got another spinning rod, so Bates are still there actually. They've had a bit, a bit of a chew, but we'll get the next spinning rod in. Hey! One. One whiting. Quite a nice size actually. Good size. Again, we've done really well with the uh, numbers today. Unbelievable. 30, I'd say we're on to 30. We're probably up to 30s now, yeah. There we go. We'll put this one back. Well, there we go. That's much better. Double whammy. We'll unhook the bigger one first. And that was on the rod with braid. So that's three on the last winding. That is, yeah. Oh, yes, another double this time. I don't know how many I've had now, actually. That's this is five. Good, that could be fish of the day. Oh, that could be the fish of the trip, yeah. That's a cracker. That's a nice one there. That would be good eating fish, that one. Yeah, but we put the fire out. <laughs> I know. Now we're going to put them back. That's a nice whiting. That's for a sure. really good fish, yeah. Good fish. Well, unfortunately, the last rod didn't yield any results, but it's been really good fun. It's been really, really cold, freezing temperatures, but really enjoyable. We've had the tinny lamp going, we've had the fire going, we cooked some food, we've enjoyed ourselves, and we've had uh, probably over 30 whiting. So really, and that's in just a few hours in the evening here, over in the UK, in probably early winter. Really good fun. If you guys get the opportunity, get out on the beaches when you can. There's absolutely no one here. We've seen no fishermen. It's been, you know, brilliant. Had a whole beach to ourselves. Get out there, watch some more Totally Awesome Fishing videos. Check out all the videos in the playlist below. And uh, keep subscribing, keep liking.